You learn so much from racing. It's not like you say, like when you win, you don't really ask any questions. Like you don't look back on what you did because you did everything perfect well, in everyone's eyes. So no, it's nice to win, but we learn so much more from, from not winning. How are you feeling? Oh. Nervous? Yeah, man. Angry? Annoying, yeah. yeah, pissed. I can sense that. Yeah, we'll channel it. Oh. Channel the anger. Got right, a big deep breath in. Big long push out. If you feel like you need to be, then make yourself angry. If you feel like you need to calm down, you can do a few more breaths. I think going into the season, I'd already had a, like, a month period where I was just so unmotivated. But I, I don't know, I guess the thought of like, improving myself and getting back to you know, full strength, full fitness and knowing how good it feels to have that progression is just what kept me going. I just guess I was like, well, it's going to be good at some point. Like, I can't just be shit. For <laughs> I can't just feel like this. And I think the fact that you feel shit but you've got everything so good is just like it makes you feel even shitter. Cause you're like, well, I have no reason to be unhappy. Like at that point I was fifth in the world. I'd had two major injuries. I'd come back from both of them. And yeah, I just wasn't particularly very happy with how things were going at all. So the bad days at the races almost felt not as bad. Like to me, they were just miniature problems. Cause it's like, well, I was just racing bikes at the end of the day. Like it, this is what makes me so happy. So yeah. Right, you got about minute and a half to get dressed and do your bits and bobs and then you'll have four minutes to start. Practice is all about piecing the track together, piecing your lines together to try and get that full run and that's what practice is there for. You, do, you stop and look at sections, you want to know what line is fastest and it's not always about what line is fastest because there could be a fastest line for someone but if you're not doing that line comfortably then it's not going to be fastest for you and where you saw me that was the case so I was trying to figure out another line that I could do well so my deficit wouldn't be as big but in the end I just had to suck it up and do the line anyway because there was no other option that would have been a good option. <laughs> Like, it's okay to be scared and it's okay to... Sometimes you're just not willing to put it all on the line. Because this is the section she got absolutely fucking smoked in. Like, from just up here down to where it comes out onto the, the fire road, she lost like five and a half seconds. Wow. Ridiculous. Like. So this is sector four, which is a big, long, flat rock garden. And it's, it's a short sector, so about 35, 40 seconds long. And Tani lost about five and a half seconds here in, in racing to the, the fastest girl. You know, she, she'll always like evidence, so video clips, timing, that sort of thing, you know, she, she'll need evidence to back it up, as we all will, and very often the, the ladies will have the fastest line for the ladies, and that's what we'll compare to, you know. It's kind of, sometimes it's what you do with the information that matters, not what the information is, you know. Sector four, or sector three, is like 40 seconds long, mm -hmm. and yesterday, Miriam beat me by seven and a half seconds, in a 40 second what? split, yeah. I thought there was something wrong with the timing, but then obviously <laughs> today was the same. <laughs> yeah, I looked at it all, I was like, how? Oh, I can't wait for this, it's just flat and straight, no, yeah. It's easier for sure. Yeah. The thing is, is it looked like it's not going to hold you, but it actually does. Like, I hit that so fast in my race run. You know what's going to be horrible? <laughs> <laughs> that in the wet. <laughs> yeah. Like, like we say, I can commit to berms and high speed and jumps, like fine. But you put me in a rock garden and I look at all the pointy rocks. I'm just like, yeah, but you, no. have, you have a history. You know why? <laughs> you know, it's not, yeah. it's not out of nowhere. I think I always try and do things the way the other girls do it, and then this happens. I'm like, oh, I should just use what I'm good at. Yeah. I do feel like my bike could still work with me a little bit better. Better, yeah. But I know, I know that, I'm, like. What do you think? That should be the whole way through for a race run now. Yeah, no. Right. 
I think we've just got to yeah, pick lines that are going to suit to you, yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They might be a bit slower, but they'll be faster for me. Totally. I think it's just you're not mega confident in the front and you're not mega confident to push. And it just gets highlighted in, in those demanding sections. You know. The issue is she's not moulding with her bike at the minute. She doesn't feel at one. And credit to her, she's like really sensitive to stuff like this which makes it really easy to work with but um, I wouldn't have the mental capacity to be doing this whilst trying to fucking go as fast as I can but it's essentially being able to load the front properly and like have control of what the front's doing and she's not getting that. We've got some custom head cups made for this frame um, which we've been running pretty much all year and then now Tani's a bit more confident with the bike it made sense to go to the zero one which sits right in the middle which has been great in terms of angles and everything nothing changes so where she was like oh i don't know actually that feels yeah so these say three mil and these ones say zero so it's literally just gone forward three mil you have to be in a good headspace with it as well and i know she's she's in a good place but she's questioning whether she's making the right decision all the time at the minute why did we go to the zero head cup in the first place? Can you remember? Just because you didn't look like you were over enough. You were bunched. Okay, let's go back to the zero. My job is to back up with actual information whether she is making a good decision or not. I always have the thing of if you feel like it's right for you, it's the right decision. Like your gut should always talk harder than anything else. So. Um, so yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just more than happy to try everything because tomorrow's the, the bit that matters, so. All right, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Downhill Saturday here at the Mercedes-Benz UCI Mountain Bike World Cup Snowshoe USA. We've got the elite woman coming your way at 12.30 this afternoon, so five minutes and then... The zone is just tunnel vision, isn't it? That's, that's what the zone is to me anyway. There's just, there's one goal. There's, you need to just get to the finish line as fast as possible. <laughs> then you're ready to go, like you're fired up. It was like, I, that's what I was before I run, before we got red flagged. It's not often that I get that like, like I want to go now, like I'm so ready to go. So to then have a delay and then have to kind of try and channel those emotions and feelings and you're like, oh, well, now's not the time. You have to like tell your body like, we're not about to go. And I feel like your body's like, well, when are we going then? Like, I was just so ready. And then obviously we didn't know how long we had. So I just had to kind of channel it all and just wait until there was a green light. And to hear on the radio, like, oh, red flag, Marshal 29, and obviously I knew exactly where the Marshal was. So I had to try really hard to just not think about that and put those thoughts to one side and be like, well, that's always the risk when you're going in for any run, not just a race run, so. Momentarily, we're gonna get started again with Tony Seagrave, and unfortunately uh, getting caught by that red flag, so it's gonna be Seagrave, Farina, Yeah, you'll see me pacing up and down and I think it's more kind of nervous for them, you know, even though actually probably the race run is the safest run they're going to have because by that point they've learned everything along the way. 
I just want them to get down safe, you know, and I'll pace anywhere I can't stand still or sit still and it's probably the worst. And yeah, if I was to sit down, I don't know what I'd do, you know. I need to wander around to try and calm myself down a little bit. Yes! Come on, come on, just go, go, more, 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 more. Come on, go on, go on, go on, yes. Good, good. That's all we need. That's all we need. Fuck okay, it, I'm done. <laughs> Season's over. Oh. Sigh of relief. I think over the past couple of years, especially the women's field has just rocketed and hence why I think we had these massive highs and massive lows and waves and because the progression of the women's field is like I said, it's just gone through the roof. So, which is outstanding because it means I'm going to have to push so much more and become a better athlete because of it. But I like to think that maybe, you know, I was a part of that progression. In fourth place for the Kenyan collector, F.A.T. Tani, the same. You know, a few years ago I was winning a few World Cups a year. Not easily, but a lot easier than it would be, um, what it feels like it would be now. It's, it's not easy work at all. And, you know, we've got girls that are, are willing to put a lot on the line to, to win a race. I know, I'm, I'm aware of like some of the noises, like especially when... Speaking of. <laughs> <laughs> can you really hear that? Yeah, but I can yeah. try to fix it.